I see him. There he is. Yeah, that's a FedEx. That's a 757. Good visual patterns. 3109 traffic off your left wing. Type unknown. I'm the case of 1900 moving now westbound. FedEx 3109. Roger that. We haven't been sailing. Uh, localizer's coming in fine. <laughs> he saw me. The 757 is off to my left now, and I'm 500 feet below his altitude. I think I'm clear of his wake. When suddenly. Damn it, I went through his wake. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. Today, we're going to talk about wake turbulence and how to avoid it. As you saw in the video, the previous video that I showed, you saw a pilot just flying along and lost control of the airplane for a few seconds. That's what a wake turbulence can do to you. Now, it's not necessarily dangerous, but it's best to avoid it in all situations necessary. Now, wake turbulence is something that you will learn as a student pilot whenever you learn how to fly. It doesn't matter how long you've been flying, how many hours you have, or how much ratings you have, you are vulnerable to wake turbulence. It's really a matter of paying attention. So what is wake turbulence? Wake turbulence, the easiest way to explain it, it's energy that's left behind after an aircraft passes through. Okay, that's the easiest way I can explain it to my non-pilot friends. Now, to go into a little bit more detail, when you think of an aircraft, for that aircraft to be able to fly, you need wind over its wings, okay? And think of a scenario when an aircraft is taken off. This is the perfect scenario where you want to avoid wake turbulence because on takeoff, this is when the airplane is using the most amount of power and also the highest angle of attack because it's generating lift. And for that to happen, you have air flowing over its wings. Now, when air flows over the wing of an aircraft, you have some of that air at the tip of the aircraft or the tip of the wing that go that does this so it goes into a circular form like this and that's referred to as wing vortices and generally speaking even after that aircraft have left that particular location on its flight path you still have that wing vortices left behind and it will stick around for a few minutes and when you have another aircraft try to fly through that same path that vortices can cause some turbulence and that's really what wake turbulence is now wake turbulence is also dependent on the size and weight of that aircraft without boring you with all the scientific term angle of attack there's a direct correlation with the weight or how heavy the aircraft is and the amount of angle of attack so this plays a factor also in wake turbulence so when you have a heavier plane fly by or is taken off you want to stay far far away from that because the heavier the plane the more wing vortices the more turbulent that situation can get and if we focus more specifically on jets think of mid-sized jets jumbo jets those two engines those turbo jet engines can really be a problem and if you want to find this out in real life go stand behind a jet that's either doing run up or about to take off just just a couple of feet behind to be safe and you see that the energy that's coming from behind those jet engines can really take you off your feet especially on takeoff and again on takeoff you the, that airplane is using the most amount of power and so for smaller aircraft if you're traveling behind a jet you have to worry about two things one those wing vortices but also the energy that's been left behind by those jet engines they're called jet wash and although the jet wash would dissolve much sooner than the wing vortices you still have to be careful now we only have to worry about wake turbulence with heavier jets right no just like with big jets wake turbulence can also occur with smaller planes single engine airplanes twin engine airplanes even helicopters and here's a perfect example what you see in this video is a black hawk helicopter taking off and it looks like a normal day and you see this helicopter 
take off, go on its way, and you don't think anything of it. But pay attention. Some time later, you see a small piston engine try to land in the same path of that helicopter taking off. And this is what happened. You see the small aircraft lose control literally on top of the runway and crash that airplane. Now we can hope that all of the occupants of that aircraft is okay, but this is the danger of awake turbulence. And two lessons we can take away from this video is one, it's better for any type of emergency situation to happen when you have altitude. As you can see with this pilot in the small piston engine airplane, they thought they've already made their runway. They thought, I'm just gonna land the airplane and boom, look at what happens. Generally speaking, when you're that low to the ground or even a little bit higher, if you don't have much room between the aircraft and the ground, chances are if you lose control of that airplane, it's gonna crash because you don't have any room to make correction, which is exactly what happened here. The second lesson we can take away from this video is you never stop flying the airplane. This is something your instructor will grill into you as a student pilot. Oftentimes, and I can tell you from personal experience, when you're coming into land, once you've made your runway, you feel this sense of relief. I'm done flying, I just need to power off and put this plane down as easy as possible. But even after you touch down, you're still flying the airplane. If you're still on an active runway, you're still flying the airplane. And the same goes for this aircraft that crashed land in the path of the helicopter. What I imagine is the pilot may have thought, okay, I've made my runway, I just need to put the airplane down and go on my way. But you see, you never stop flying the airplane. And really this just has to do with paying attention. When you see a bigger aircraft that's about to take off or flying through the same spot that you're about to fly through or touch down, the rule of thumb is you fly above that path to avoid turbulence, especially when you're low to the ground. And so really this is paying attention. As a pilot, you pay attention until you turn the engine off. Again, you may think once you land or when you're attacked, accidents happen at any point of flight. And that includes when you're on the ground, when you're taxiing, accidents happen. And so you never stop flying the airplane until you get to your final destination and you take the ignition key out. That's when you stop flying. I hope this video helps and I hope that you've learned something today. My hope is that all pilots out there, myself included, are being safe and we're paying attention because wake turbulence can be something it can be nothing, but you must avoid it by all means necessary. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And also make sure you subscribe if this is your first time. Thank you all so much for watching. A great way to support the channel is by becoming an MVP member. Go on to mojogroup.net forward slash MVP. And I will catch you all on the next video. Peace.